Let's talk about STP or Spanning Tree Protocol. Is it really important? Many people are raising eyebrows when I mentioned STP is dead, STP is legacy, and you can skip Spanning Tree Protocol. I mentioned all of the above from these videos, so check them out. And lastly, I will say this now, STP is for losers. And before you give this video bad comments, consider watching this video first in full as I will break down why you can. Yes, you can skip learning STP or Spanning Tree Protocol. After over 20 years working in the IT industry, I come up with this list. The top 10 network protocols and technologies that you as a network engineer should learn. The first half of this list is in any order. So let's begin. So the first one would be IP addressing, CIDR, and subnetting. Next would be virtual LANs or VLANs. And this works in conjunction with 802.1x. Some platforms, some vendors call it trunking. Next would be routing protocols such as EIGRP, OSPF, IS2IS, BGP, etc. Next would be network address translation or NAT. Some vendors, they have a version that can translate even port. This is called PAT or port address translation. Next would be port channels. Sometimes we call it ether channels. Sometimes we call it link aggregation group or LAG using LACP protocol. Now, I would consider all mentioned are essentials or as essentials. It's basic, but it's quite important. And here's the reason why STP doesn't belong in the list. All mentioned technologies require to be activated by you on most network devices. How about STP? Not really, as it's already activated. STP will work no matter what. Now, here are other technologies. Again, that is more important to learn than STP. And yeah, this is also in any order. Next would be overlay network protocols, such as MPLS, MPBGP, EVPN, and DXLAN. Next would be filtering configuration. These are access control list or ACL, route maps, prefix list, and security groups. Next is first hop redundancy protocol or FHRP, such as HSRP, VRP, VARP. And this works in conjunction with device redundancy technologies, such as VPC or virtual port channel and MLAG. Next would be application load balancer. This runs in application delivery controller. This works in conjunction with DNS, glo DNS global load balancing. Now, many people would think DNS is part of application and should be worked by application uh, people, but no. In some parts of our business, DNS is part of networking, especially if we're talking about DNS gl global load balancing. And lastly, we'll have uh, VPNs or virtual private networks. Okay, these are IPsec VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, GRE with VPN, and many others. Now, these are not the VPN that runs in our application, in our mobile devices, in our PCs. No, we're talking about VPNs that is a feature that can be enabled in our router, firewall, and application load balancers. So that's my top 10. STP is not in the list. It doesn't even belong in 11, 12, 13 spot as I still have QoS, multicast, AAA such as Radius and TACAX, software-defined technology such as SDN and SD-WAN. The concept of SDN is to eliminate blocking ports caused by STP. So tell me, do you think STP deserves to be in this list? Next, the people who are saying STP is important to learn, most of these are Cisco, Juniper, HP, Aruba network engineers. Do you think you're the only network engineers in the world? Let me break this down for you. I will mention five types of network engineers, their roles, and how important STP on their day-to-day -day operations. So first, F5 network engineers. F5 network engineers focuses on application load balancing, DNS load balancing, network optimization, etc. Ask any F5 network engineers if STP is involved in their day-to-day -day task. The answer would be one big fat no. 
so they will get zero. Two, Cisco, Juniper, or Arista this data center network engineers. So the modern data center networks focuses on SDN or software defined networks, VXLAN, MPBGP, EVPN. And again, the purpose is to eliminate switching loops and block ports. Again, if you're going to ask data center network engineers how frequent they use STP, they would answer one big fat zero. Third, service provider network engineers. Service provider networking focuses on WAN technology such as MPLS, BGP, VPN, and not so much involved in layer 2 switching. So how frequent they use F, uh, SDP or the Spanning Tree Protocol? Probably zero. Next, AWS Network Engineers, or it can be any cloud service provider, not just AWS, it can be Azure, Google Cloud, etc. Alright, let's just say in AWS. In AWS, you have to learn and work with VPC or Virtual Private Cloud. What else? NAT, routing, ACL, and security groups. What else? Oh, VPNs, application load balancer, and DNS load balancing. Ask any AWS network engineers if they work with STP. And they will tell you this straight from their heart, their corazón. What the f is that? So, a big fat zero again all right next we have the enterprise and campus network engineers this is probably the only network engineer role that you have a chance working with spanning tree protocol or sdp as you will be building more into switching but still not quite for modern design or modern network design um well even for legacy design you will only configure sdp on the initial implementation because you want to prioritize few devices to be the root bridge but the operational part not so much okay i'll not give this zero i'll be a little generous i will give it one out of ten so the total percentage that you will work with stp is two percent actually it should be less than two percent because i still didn't include wireless network engineers and network engineers focusing on virtualization and containerization as I mentioned, some of you will defend learning STP is still quite important. Well, that's what they will tell you if you start learning with Cisco technologies, especially if you are a CCNA level. If you start learning networking from other technologies like Arista, F5, VMware, or even open source technologies such as containers, Docker, and Kubernetes, what else? Even cloud technologies such as AWS, they will talk about many networking concepts, but quite minimal or even zero about STP or Spanning Tree Protocol, as STP use case in modern networks are quite rare. Meaning, in the real world, you will probably not gonna deal with STP. And uh, one more thing, I don't understand why in CCIE Enterprise, they still cover, they still talk about STP in advanced level. Learning basic STP, I think is okay, but try to ask network engineers with 10 or 15 or over 20 years of experience. Most of them will tell you they can't remember the last time they configured or monitored STP. So what do you think? Is STP a good learning investment? Many people will still say it depends. Well, don't state the obvious. Of course, it's always it depends. Okay, I will not deny that there are still companies who still have loop topologies. And they still have SDP block ports in their network design, in their network infrastructure. These companies are losers. You know, it's more cost effective to shift from legacy networks to leaf and spine architecture, aka modern network architecture. And this is to eliminate block ports. You know, companies are wasting so much money when they have blocking ports, when they have loops, when they're focusing on STP. Again, STP is for losers.